Across the UK, there are over 1,500 discrete river systems, comprising over 200,000 kilometres of watercourses. These rivers are vital for the support of the UK's wildlife and for our own health and well-being. However, after centuries of considerable man-made disturbances, it is now up to us to ensure that our rivers are looked after. Right across the country, river restoration projects are already underway, and I'm heading to Derbyshire to learn more about a river with some rather special inhabitants. I'm Josh, and we're here right on the River Ecclesbourne in Derbyshire, where a project involving the Derbyshire Wildlife Trust and the Wild Trout Trust is already showing promise. After removing the weir and improving the health in the lower reaches of the river, they saw wild salmon return to spawn for the first time in over 100 years. But there is more to be done. The project is now working to rewild, or rewiggle, further reaches of the river upstream where they hope the salmon and other freshwater fish will be able to migrate and breed. Right now, we're off to meet some of the people making that a reality. I'm meeting with Tim Jacklin from the Wild Trout Trust, an environmental charity that focuses on habitat restoration projects on rivers. It's time to jump in and find out why Tim is so interested in the River Ecclesbourne. It's quite a special little river because over the last few years, we've started to see Atlantic salmon returning here to breed um, after decades and decades of extinction from the Trent system. And that return of the salmon is um, partly linked to some of the work that you've been carrying out in this river, correct? That's right. The, the catalyst for salmon returning was basically the clean-up in water quality of the River Trent, uh, sort of in the latter half of the 20th century. Uh, and the challenge for us since then has been to take away some of the barriers to migration that exist throughout the river. We'd started to see uh, large salmon turning up in winter downstream of this particular point, uh, the Snake Lane Weir, which was a, a concrete structure that had been built in the 1970s and was a complete barrier to fish getting upstream. They became a bit of a sort of uh, local, uh, local celebrities, really. People were going out with their head torches at night and looking into the river. So they attracted quite a lot of attention. And in partnership with the Environment Agency, the Wild Trout Trust took the project on and uh, we, we removed this weir and replaced it with a long boulder rapid, which basically breaks the flow up and allows the fish to make their way upstream. And in the 12 months since it was removed, we have found juvenile salmon upstream. So it's, it's proved that it's been successful. Obviously we're stood at the moment in Derbyshire, which is pretty much as far from the sea as you can get it in is. the UK. Yeah. Um, so where exactly are these salmon coming from and what does it take for them to get to this to this bit of river? Well, at this point here, we're about 100 miles from the sea. Um, so those adult salmon will have uh, been feeding in the sea around Greenland and the Faroe Islands. Uh, and they'll have made their way from there back into the North Sea, into the Humber estuary and then up the River Trent uh, and then into the River Derwent near south of Derby and then up through the city of Derby uh, and then into the Ecclesbourne here. So the 100 miles in fresh water um, is a, a relatively small part of their overall journey but is probably the most difficult part. And so what are the major issues affecting rivers like this in Derbyshire and I guess across the rest of the country? Um, across the country uh, the, there are several issues that affect rivers. There's basically the quality of the water. So is it clean enough uh, in terms of the, uh, you know, discharges that are going into it, such as from sewage works or diffuse agricultural pollution. Uh, th those are both major issues for, for waterways, particularly in Derbyshire. Um, the other element is uh, water quantity. So we're putting more and more demands on our rivers in terms of abstraction. Uh, taking water out for, for, for drinking supply and we're seeing in, you know, in parts of uh, the south and particularly the east of the country rivers literally drying up because of those pressures being put on, on them. And of course if you're taking water out of the rivers you're also taking away their capacity to dilute the stuff that's been discharged into them so you're exacerbating those pollution problems. And then really the third plank that is the physical habitat side of things and the quality of that, of the shape and the depth profiles and the gravel quantities and the vegetation along the side of rivers, you know, those physical elements that make up the habitat quality that, that the wildlife that use the rivers require. I was going to ask about that. I mean, when it comes to the sort of the dredging and the, I guess, straightening of the rivers, like how does that impact the biodiversity of, 
of, of the rivers and what you can find in them. Basically, it homogenizes them. So uh, it takes out the bends uh, in rivers. I mean, we're, we're standing on a, a bend in the River Ecclesbourne here and the outside of the bend is, is deep and we're standing on some nice gravel beach here. You know, it, it, and it's just that variety that is lost, really. If the, if the river is dredged and straightened, you lose the bends, you lose the, 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 the uh, pro energy profile that you get from the, the flows and how that sorts out the substrates into, into different uh, sizes, um, which are used is basically that variety translates directly into different types of habitat and habitat niches that are used by all sorts of different creatures. I was going to say, and then like that, that sort of variety of habitats then obviously attracts a variety of animals that can inhabit those, those regions, I guess. Absolutely, yeah. 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 And when it comes to um, the Ecclesbourne specifically, obviously there's been a lot of work with the removal of the weir, um, and the sort of re-wiggling even further upstream. And I was just wondering sort of what you hope the future of the project will be and what you hope to see in the coming years. Well, salmon have been a real success story on the Trent system and, and its tributaries like the Ecclesbourne. And it's fantastic to see those returning because they're such an iconic species that everyone's heard of and have pretty much everybody knows that they need the clean water and the good habitat. So that's a real success story. And, and you know, we were opening, that particular project opened up a good 10 kilometres of, of spawning habitat upstream. So that translates into hundreds more juvenile salmon that, that make their way downstream and, and hopefully to come back and spawn uh, and, and, you know, props up what is, uh, you know, a globally endangered species. With the River Ecclesbourne so vital for the migrating salmon, I'm heading to Turnditch following their ancient spawning route further upstream, where work is well underway to return a section of the river to its natural course. I'm meeting Jennifer Krill, a Living Rivers Officer for the Derbyshire Wildlife Trust, to find out more about this important project. We're currently here at this um, amazing site which the Derbyshire Wildlife Trust is working on, on the River Ecclesbourne, and I was just wondering if you could explain a little bit about the work that's going on behind us right now. Yeah, so this is actually uh, the second part of a wider Ecclesbourne restoration project that we've been working on over the past sort of five or so years. And this actually, the weir at Poston Mill is the last remaining weir on the River Ecclesbourne. And once this project is completed to bypass that weir, we've actually opened up about 28 kilometres of the river for, um, well, for, for everything, but also for those migratory fish species who are trying to get to the headwaters. Um, so... Instead of obviously removing the weir here, we're actually bypassing it, as I say. Uh, so we have looked at where the river uh, used to flow. So it was straightened in the 18th century uh, for the purposes of milling. Um, but the existing channel uh, was here. Granted, it was only a small little drain. But essentially what you can see going on behind us is that we have sort of reprofiled and widened and deepened the old channel. Um, and then just yesterday, we actually diverted the River Ecclesbourne into its new course. So it's now flowing through this new channel for us. And um, the old River Ecclesbourne channel will be uh, backfilled and create more habitat as well. So the work going on is, you know, really quite extensive and quite impressive what um, the Wildlife Trust is getting up to here. Um, and some people call it um, sort of rewilding or rewiggling. And I was just wondering if you could explain to us a bit more what that actually means in this context. Yeah, so a lot of our rivers um, across the whole country um, have been straightened sort of artificially um, for many different reasons, as I say, some for the purposes of milling, so harnessing the energy of the river. Um, but in other cases, it might be to actually drain a landscape. Um, water moves a lot quicker through straight channels, so uh, that could be another reason. Um, unfortunately, what that does is it removes any sort of natural habitat that we uh, would expect to see in a healthy river. Um, so what we're doing here is taking the straight in sort of canalised channel and as you say re-wiggling or re-meandering it, um, it which is essentially just putting the bends back into it um, and what that does is it's changing the sort of speed of flow of the water, it's creating nice beaches, different habitats for a whole host of different species um, and just making the river like I say more natural. And I think that's kind of what's really key about it isn't it where sort of the more bends the more habitats and that sort of leads to sort of more niches I guess and more sort of yeah. invertebrates and more more biodiversity is that right? Absolutely yeah so there will we will see a huge increase in biodiversity at the site and um, 
obviously particularly after the work and that will be monitored um, as the project progresses um, but as I say um, particularly for salmon migration obviously when they can spawn in the headwaters they're bringing nutrients and a whole host of different benefits to uh, the river system um, and like you say all the different habitats in the gravels and the stones that we're putting in um, create a lots of different uh, sort of like micro habitats for things like invertebrates as you say. Obviously it's very early days here I mean it was literally only a few days ago that it was sort of reconnected and the water started flowing. Um, how do you expect this project to develop over the next sort of year to, to maybe five years, I guess? Yeah, so very early days at the moment, but um, as you can see, the, the full flow of the River Ecclesbourne is now diverted into its brand new channel, which we're super excited about. Um, and over the next few years, we're going to see this whole area just continue to re-naturalise. So um, we'll get some sediment being deposited on some of the beaches, creating more habitats. Uh, we're going to do a load of tree planting to actually um, increase the biodiversity of the area. We were just going to hopefully watch it just completely become a brand new river, um, uh, as it should be. Obviously, this is just one river in the middle of Derbyshire, but how important do you think it is to replicate these sorts of projects across the rest of the country? I mean, it's incredibly important where, you know, we've we've changed uh, the the look of our rivers um, for the worse in a lot of instances and um, you know part of the work that Derbyshire Wildlife Trust and partners are doing is to try and look at um, obviously areas where we can re-naturalise rivers. Um, there are lots of projects across the country that are trying to do the same um, and I think it's important that we focus on um, sort of opening up and creating access for a host of different species uh, and creating access to these important headwaters um, for you know species such as your Atlantic salmon, uh, your brown trout, um, and you could see the return of you know lampreys, eels, you know to some of these catchments where you know since sort of the industrial revolution they've they've been lost. You know um, we know the Atlantic salmon migrates thousands of kilometres um, back to its home river uh, to spawn, um, and you know that those pathways have been blocked uh, by things such as weirs uh, for many many years. So you know. The, 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 the hope for this project is that we could see Atlantic salmon returning to the headwaters of the Ecclesbourne um, for the first time in sort of over 100 years, really. But it is not only the fish that benefit from the restoration and healthy management of our rivers, as Tim explains. Water quality is, is essential for, for humans as well as, uh, as all the other creatures. So, you know, that's something that we, we need to be well aware of and, and, and put right. And I think um, not just the sort of physical health side of things as well, but mental health. You know, rivers are a really important part of our, our environment and important to a lot of people. And knowing that they're healthy systems, uh, you know, with, with thriving biodiversity is, is an important plank in, in our mental health as well. I think we've got some huge challenges ahead of us, uh, but, you know, they're not making rivers anymore, so we, we've got to look after the ones that we've got. And I think it's a, you know, a mark of our society how we treat them. But um, I think overall there's a lot of people um, batting for them and, and that gives me a lot of hope. With the restoration work here nearly complete, it is hoped that within the next few years, salmon will be swimming these waters once again. And with more and more projects like these occurring right across the UK, it is hoped that we can start to undo some of the damage we've done to our rivers to the benefit not only of nature, but to ourselves too. If you enjoyed watching this film, then why not try out some of our other videos in our Field Studies series? And if you want to find out more about salmon migration, then follow the link. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel.